Hi, it's Dr. A. I got a, another great question, so I thought I would share it in a brief video, and that was uh, generally about uh, thyroid hormone, but very specifically a type of thyroid hormone that um, a lot of times people don't talk about or test or hear about, <clears throat> and that is uh, reverse T3. So if you look, your thyroid is synthesized in four steps, and it's on a tyrosine base, and you add iodines. And so when they say, you know, T1, 2, 3, 4, uh, that's your tyrosine base with 1, 2, 3, or 4 iodines. So T3 and T4, commonly measured in the blood, <clears throat> and they are what are produced by the thyroid for export for the most part. T1 and 2 are usually on the inside of the thyroid. Uh, working their way up to being T3 and T4, not all the time, but usually. So T3 and T4 are the export molecules, and T3 is actually the most active one. So T4 is sort of a stable form. T3 with three iodines is usually deiodinated. To T4, one iodine take off, taken off in the cell, and it goes and it binds to the receptors. We talked about that in the previous one. But somebody asked, well, what is, I've heard of T3 and T4, but I've also heard of reverse T3, which sounds interesting. So if you think about <clears throat> the manufacture of different molecules, you'll get things that sometimes come out in, uh, in two different ways. And so it's almost like mirror images. So if one uh, T3 is over here and it's normal or active T3 that can bind at the receptors, it is possible for your body to make a mirror image-like uh, molecule. We call it reverse T3. So it can be tested on lab tests. Now, there's a lot of controversy about what it means and all of that stuff, and the research is kind of back and forth, but here's the bottom line with it, uh, because controversy is just controversy, and um, I don't usually engage in that sort of stuff. In healthy people, reverse T3 may not mean much of anything, uh, like a lot of other things you can test in you know, lab testing. But in sick people, if you look at, well, why would your body make reverse T3? I mean, it naturally sort of makes some, but sometimes it'll make a little extra. Why would your body make that? Well, we talked about in a previous uh, couple of uh, sections, a long form uh, podcast and a short form about um, my, you know, my medical treatment made me feel bad or sick or whatever. And I was saying in those that one of the things your body does when you're chronically ill is it uh, keeps um, your metabolism tamped down so that you can't have too much energy. So you think oh, that's great. Why is my body doing that? Well, it's basically doing that saying, if you're going to be sick and your body's not going to work appropriately, we're not going to let you uh, operate your metabolism at full speed. So what happens, one of the many ways this happens, and stress hormones can induce this, which are induced on chronic illness, the cytokines of infections, all sorts of things do this. It'll go... And when the thyroid hormone is produced, instead of producing a little bit of reverse T3 and a lot of regular T3, you'll start to make more of the, of the reverse T3. And I used to tell patients reverse T3 is sort of like evil T3. It goes and blocks the receptors. So you have this molecule where if it was turned around, it would be useful. And now it's actually inhibitory. So your body is using this as a protective mechanism. This is why I was saying in the, you know, why did my therapy make me sick sections. Um, it's, it's the body trying to do something with you usually being chronically ill or very acutely ill, trying to slow things down. Now, that doesn't mean it's the right thing long term, but short term, it's trying to protect you. So reverse T3 in a sick person, a chronically ill person, we got to where we measured uh, reverse T3 and all the other thyroid stuff in every chronically ill person. And many chronically ill people, you'll see the reverse T3 is way above the normal index. And that is just a sign that the body is working uh, to try and slow things down so that you're not hyper metabolizing with a really sick body. And uh, so it's, it's literally kind of like if you, if you had engine problems uh, and 
you know, you kind of went into idle or first gear and you're okay if you're going slow, but you go fast and the thing's going to blow up, your body's thinking that way biochemically. We won't let you go fast because we don't think you have the reserve to do that. So reverse T3 is one of many ways that the that this slowdown goes in. Now, there are ways to um, treat it, if you will. Mostly it's an indication of a bigger problem. And so treating the rest of the problems is really the ultimate treatment for it. But also getting the stress hormones and the inflammatory cytokines back in line will bring it down a bit. Initially, if people are supported, sometimes uh, your doctor will give you T3 hormone. Normally thyroid is T4 that you take by mouth. There is a T3 version in the mix but normally it's given as T4. So your doctor might add some T3 or give you some T3. Normally that's uh, useful in the early phases of treating chronic illness. Um, that's only something that you and your doctor can sort out though, uh, but that's why that's done sometimes. And definitely uh, giving T3 will bring the T3, reverse T3 down. Now, <clears throat> one of the things that you have to be concerned with though is just like your illness makes you feel bad because you're suppressing your metabolism. If you go in guns blazing and just put a bunch of thyroid into somebody, especially T3, and turn all their mitochondrial and nuclear receptors back on, their body will speed up. And if, as I was saying, the engine is broken and the engine's gonna blow up if we speed it up, that's not gonna feel well. There's another reason why treatment can make you feel sick. So you get thyroid even though you need it, even a T3 therapy and you feel worse, that doesn't mean the thyroid's bad. It means you don't have enough support for all the other problems that are going on. So reverse T3 is a little piece of a very big puzzle. In healthy people, there usually is, in my experience, not a reason to be testing it because they're healthy. But in chronically ill people, there is a reason to test it and also to use it as a marker for how suppressed the rest of uh, that person is. And the longer you've been sick, generally the more reverse T3 you will build up. Now, is it something where you're just treating that one thing? No, that shouldn't ever be done because there's so many other things that come involved. But reverse T3 is an important monitor, especially in a chronically ill person. Now, somebody also asked, well, what about if the reverse T3 is low? And it's one of those lab analytes that um, if it's low and you're feeling healthy or you're treating it, it will naturally go down. It'll go below normal. There's no harm. It, it doesn't hurt anything. Uh, it's, it's, it's not necessary. Uh, it's naturally made in your body, but it will come back after you're done treating it. So it's low doesn't really mean much. High definitely does indicate this sort of uh, metabolic suppression. So hopefully that helps, uh, you know, like, share, subscribe, notifications, all those good things. Really appreciate everybody and, and all your comments and questions. Thank you very much.